Hi, I'm Carl Lizards for CNN 10. This fall, Rutgers University says it will require its students to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Can it legally do that? That is the question that leads off today's show. Rutgers is based in the state of New Jersey. It's a large school. It has three main campuses and enrolls more than 70,000 students in all. And it's one of the first American universities to announce that most of those students will need a coronavirus vaccine come fall semester. There are exceptions to this rule. Rutgers says students can request an exemption, permission to attend without getting the vaccine for religious or medical reasons, and the rule won't apply at all to students who attend online without actually setting foot on Rutgers campuses. But the rest of those who do will have to show proof they've been vaccinated. At this point, Rutgers faculty is not required to get the vaccines, though they are strongly encouraged to do so. Everyone on campus still has to participate in Rutgers COVID testing programs, and everyone is still required to wear masks and keep their distance from one another on campus. The university says the decisions are in support of its commitment to health and safety for all members of its community, but it is a change from earlier this year when a senior chancellor said that in line with Rutgers' stance on protecting human liberties, the vaccine was not mandatory. Most colleges require students to have certain vaccines before they can attend classes. What's different about the coronavirus vaccines is that they haven't been formally approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The three vaccines that Americans can get are authorized for emergency use, and the FDA says people have to be informed that they may either accept or refuse the drugs. That's where experts say it's not clear if Rutgers or any organization can legally require people to be vaccinated. Some say that people's choice whether or not to get a vaccine needs to be protected. Others say that courts will probably side with employers or states that require the vaccine, but that it's been argued in the past that the drugs are still experimental and should not be required. So there's a lot of uncertainty about the future of coronavirus vaccine requirements on or off campus. Parts of Middle Tennessee are struggling to recover from deadly flash flooding that started last weekend. Severe storms that rolled over the state on Saturday triggered a flash flood emergency. Some places got five to nine inches of rain. That's more than Tennessee usually gets in the entire month of March. The forecast calls for another inch to an inch and a half of rain tomorrow. That's normally no big deal, according to the National Weather Service, but because the state is so waterlogged now, the additional precipitation could further swell rivers, set a new record for rainfall, and trigger additional flash flooding. In the U.S., flash floods kill more people than tornadoes, hurricanes, or lightning. A flash flood creates a rush of moving water that can sweep a grown man off his feet, a car off the road, and even your entire home off its foundation. When the ground becomes so saturated that water can no longer seep into the soil, it begins to run off quickly into rivers and streams, and this causes a rise in water and a flash. Densely populated areas have an extremely high risk of flash flooding with the additional concrete and less grassy areas for the water to soak into the soil and they can see flash flooding very quickly. In mountainous terrain, the combination of gravity plus the easy runoff can lead to catastrophic flooding when all of that water is funneled into rivers, creeks, and even the valleys. Remember, flash flooding can happen in the blink of an eye. That's why it's important to stay alert and pay attention in case a flash flood watch or warning is issued for your area. 10 second trivia. In terms of land area, what is the largest country in Africa? Nigeria, Algeria, Democratic Republic of Congo, or Sudan? Algeria is the largest country in area, but it's mostly desert. Nigeria has Africa's largest population. Almost 220 million people live in Nigeria, and the nation has the largest economy in Africa. But the CIA estimates that 70% of Nigerians live in poverty, and their country also struggles with corruption, crime, and terrorism. Boko Haram is based there. It's one of the largest terrorist groups in Africa. Since its uprising in 2009, the Nigerian military and its allies have made progress against the Islamic militants. But Boko Haram has kidnapped, displaced, or orphaned hundreds of children, and a CNN hero has a heart for helping them. Morning, morning, morning. Yo, wow. My name is Zana Bukar Mustafa. I'm the director of the Future Progress Islamic Foundation. We 
started with 36 orphans, but currently we have about 860 of them. Good morning. We don't mind where you hail from, what's your religion, what's your ethnicity, so the gender does not matter. You find the two thirds of the population in this school are girls. For me, being an orphan, I feel I have lost something from a normal girl child to an orphan. But as I step into future progress, all other things have been provided. If you can be the leaders of tomorrow, you have to start showing leadership examples now. We give a sort of a psychosocial support to this student. How do you heal the library? How do we come in together? And that is when we accept the diversities of others. There are kids from military background and then civilians. Some of them are from the Boko Haram background. All of us have a different idea from what our parents have. There is much counseling. There is much play. We are also given them uniform, books. We have professors coming here to teach various courses. We are using rice and beans every day. Most of the students come to school empty. They have not eaten anything. And then we are giving them some nutritional support and food. So who can read this for me? What is it? We have 2,013 students currently enrolled in the Future Progress Islamic Foundation. It is unique. It brings harmonious working relationship between all strata of the society. It is located in the river bank where we have our own fish farm, greenhouse. This is a lemon and you can see it has started fruiting. And then the irrigation. We have about six hectares of farmland to get a sort of livelihood. Despite the unpleasant experiences they went through. How are you? If they see me, they welcome me with a smile. They see themselves as being friends, brothers, sisters. They all call me father. I am a peace builder. I am aiming to achieve peace at the end. We are in a community where every segment of the society is being ravaged. What keeps me going is the resilience of these children. Whenever I see their faces, it gives me hope. It keeps my dream alive. Well, this is something new. An artist creates a portrait of a humanoid robot. After that, the robot paints its own interpretation of the portrait. Then, the robot's painting, along with a 12-second video clip of the robot doing the painting, goes up for auction, and finally, a human pays more than $688,000 for it. The video clip was offered as a non-fungible token, a new way to prove you own a digital artwork, even if it's widely shared. Now, some of you may be thinking, you've they gotta be kidding me. Why then go to the trouble of paying your hard-earned Monet to O'Keefe some Pizarro digital token that anyone else could Goya download with Matisse? I guess if you've got the Chagall to take the Vola's guesswork out of who its true Claper is, you can callow yourself its one and only Michelangelo owner. Marlboro, Massachusetts is our last stop today. We want to roar at the Panthers of Marlboro High School. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.